Hi, my name is Jamie Thompson and you're watching one of a series of videos that demonstrates the capabilities of Cozy Rock Software's suite of tasks and components for SQL Server integration services. The demonstrations herein were built using SQL Server Integration Services 2008, however the Cozy Rock tasks and components are available for both SQL Server Integration Services 2005 and 2008 in both 32-bit and 64-bit editions. For more information, please visit www.cozyrock.com. In this video, we're going to be talking about Cozy Rock's EDI source component. EDI stands for Electronic Data Interchange and it was a file format that was commonly used for transferring data between disparate organizations prior to the technology was used today such as XML. So first thing we're going to do is add our EDI source component, to our tool component into our toolbox. Let's go choose items and when it comes up we will go to SIS data flow items, scroll down until we find EDI source, there it is. And there we go, that's been added to the toolbox for us. What we'll do in this demonstration is go through the creation of a data flow that contains the EDI source component. And what I'll try to do is introduce uh, the contents of the EDI file that we're going to be um, extracting from and explain how they're put together. It's a very strange concept, certainly to those who are familiar with XML or even something much simpler such as CSVs. But hopefully I'll give you a little bit of a flavour of it today. So let's drag on our EDI source. Well, the first thing we need to actually do is define uh, two different properties of our EDI source. We have a configuration and we have an input file variable. Um, actually that's not quite true. We're going to have an input file, that's the correct one, correct one. The input file is the EDI file that we're actually going to load from and the configuration is a file that defines the format of that EDI file. Now whereas EDI is a format in itself, um, the EDI source component also needs a definition of what's actually in that EDI file in terms that it actually understands. Well, I'll explain that a little bit more when we actually have a look at the files, it might become a little bit clearer, but for now I just need to go and select these two files. You'll see that we have a .edi file, that's our data file, so I'll select that here as our input. And our configuration file is this XML file here. OK, now you'll see that our EDI source component has validated OK, so let's go inside and take a look. Let's take a look at the cobbler mappings. Now you see there's a number of columns that have been defined here. All this has been read out of the XML configuration file. Every EDI file, as I understand it, has uh, the notion of an, an ISA segment, which is uh, a definition of um, that, that is recognized by anything that can consume EDI. And that ISA segment is, has got a number of columns in it, and they're listed here. So, for example, we have security information, interchange date, interchange time, and again, I'll show you this again in a second when we actually take a look at the file. If we hop over to input and output properties, there are a number of outputs that have been defined on our EDI source component. Our interchange control header contains the columns from that ISA segment. Now, let's hop over to the file and take a look at what that actually means. We'll go to the XML file first, and I'm going to ex and you'll see here what we have is an XML file that contains uh, a section called segments, 
and within here we have a number of segments defined and segments are really the building blocks of any EDI file. At the top of our segment section we have a segment that has a code of ISA which is what I just mentioned. I'm not sure what ISA stands for, it just seems to be a recognised um, uh, segment that, it, that appears at the top of every EDI file. If I actually go and take a look at the EDI file, you'll see that our ISA segment appears here. It starts with, an, uh, with the code ISA. The asterisks that you see are all delimiters of the various values in that ISA segment. And if we hop back into our XML file, the fields listed here are the definitions of all the fields within that ISA segment. Okay, I hope so. I hope you can see what uh, is happening here within our XML file. We're defining the format of a segment, and, if, and you can see that being formed in our ADI file. A little bit further up, you can see that the actual delimiters that are, are used are defined up here. So going back to what I said earlier on, there is no predefined um, standards for what I use for things like delimiters inside an EDI file, but this configuration file is able to tell our EDI parser what delimiter is going to be used. Okay. So we have another a number of other segments defined in here. In here we have a functional group header, we have a functional group trailer, and we have an interchange trailer, none of which are particularly interesting. However, we do have this thing called a transaction set header, and really this is where our actual data is defined. So if I expand this XML node, what you'll see is that our segment, which is called transaction set header, and is delimited by a seg code or a segment code of ST, has a number of segments actually within it. We can see them all listed here. If I scroll down. This closing element, uh, this element is closed off here. That's the end of our uh, segment that defines our transaction set header. So if I hop back to our EDI file again, remember the segment code for our transaction set header is ST. Now if we look for ST in here, we'll see that. We have one defined here, and we have another defined below. So those are essentially our data records that we're going to be pulling in, and the contents of those data records are defined within that XML file. Now the, the ST segment is delimited at the end by something called an SE. So if I highlight SE, you'll see we have two SEs as well, so those are the, basically saying those are the ends of each of our data records. Okay, now I'm going to hop back to our data flow. I hope that's given you a little bit of a flavour of an EDI file. You see it's very different to the things that we're used to today. It's certainly not self-describing like an XML file is. And one thing I r it's really important to get across is that for every EDI file, um, we also have to provide an EDI configuration file in order that the EDI source components can read data from that EDI da uh, data file. It's also important to note that typically um, the producer of the EDI file, i.e. an organisation that you may be collecting the data file from, will provide information about how that EDI file is structured, but it would be up to you as the consumer of that file to construct the XML file that the EDI source component requires in order to read it. So it does re require a very deep understanding of how EDI files are structured how we define the structure to a consuming application. Okay, I need to go and set up the rest of our data flow. Um, I'll just pause for a minute while I actually do that and we'll come back and we'll have a com completed data flow. Okay, here we are inside our completed data flow. Before I execute it, I'm going to add a data viewer onto our transac transaction set header output. There we go, we have a data flow. Now there isn't much data in this EDI file, if I switch back to it you can actually see that. 
this is literally the contents of it. We've only got 30 rows in here. And as I said before, we've only actually got two uh, actual data rows. And you'll see that in that transaction set header data viewer. But for anyone that understands EDI, hopefully what this demonstrates is that the EDI source component is able to consume data from an EDI file and it makes it much easier to do that than it, you might otherwise find it. So let's execute this. Okay, everything's green, that's good, and we have uh, our one data view here, and sure enough we have our two rows. It's a very wide record, but we can see that we uh, first two columns in the first record say 852, and then lots of zeros in a 1, and in here we should be able to find that data right there. So sure enough, we pulled that data in from our EDI file, and we've now got it in the data flow and we can treat it just like we would any other data f data inside a SIS data flow. Right, that's really all I'm going to show today. As I kind of explained, the EDI source components is not particularly easy to understand. Certainly the EDI format isn't particularly easy to understand. But for all those legacy apps out there that uh, I still use an EDI today to, to move data between organizations, uh, the EDI source component might be an option for you in reading that data in. So I hope that's been useful and uh, I look forward to showing you some more videos of Cozy Rocks components in the very near future.